Twilight Zone is a psychological thriller TV show made in 1959. It was created and narrated by American screenwriter Rod Serling. Over the years, The Twilight Zone has completely changed the course of television and filmmaking, and its influence can be seen all over media even in modern day. Whether it's aspects like structure and storytelling, or the overall themes and messages, many episodes of The Twilight Zone were inspired and based on short stories, myths and legends. So yes, a lot of the show is fiction, but at the same time it tackles many real life issues and situations in society. Serling was an activist. By creating The Twilight Zone, he was able to disguise real life problems in sci-fi. And of course, as sci-fi was such a huge genre at the time, this made the show extremely successful. Despite how old The Twilight Zone is, it is still hugely popular nowadays too. Rolling Stone even placed it as 7th on the ranking of the 100 best TV shows of all time. The show has many reboots and remakes, one in the 80s, one in the early 2000s, and a more recent one in 2019. Throughout this investigation, we will be talking about how much The Twilight Zone has influenced media since its release, and just how much it has resonated with what we see on our screens day to day. But before we go in depth and talk about some of the episodes, here is your spoiler warning for the following episodes. Starting with the pilot episode of The Twilight Zone, where is everybody? This is one of the most iconic episodes and the one that helped get the show on air. We are thrown into the episode with our main character stumbling upon an abandoned town where there is nobody around, yet he constantly feels as though he is being watched. Many other things happen that make him and us feel paranoid. In the end, it turns out that this was all a scientific experiment conducted by the Space Force to see how long someone could last in isolation without going insane. Already, most viewers will be able to identify the subtext about the space race that was starting around the time. The space race was a competition in the 20th century around the 60s where Soviet, Russia and America were racing to see who would get to the moon first. The ending of the episode has the main character quite literally say, we'll be up there in a little while, showing how they were trying to be patriotic and support the US in the space race. It's said that this episode was actually inspired by a newspaper article from 1958 that was about a very similar topic as the ending of this episode. Theoretically speaking, this episode is very experimental and really good for subverting audience expectations. One theory that can be applied is Neil's genre theory, where the episode does follow genre conventions of science fiction and psychological thrillers, but it still manages to subvert audience expectations through its structure and narrative resolution. It manages to give the audience aspects they would expect, but also aspects they wouldn't they would have never seen coming. If you think about it, this episode doesn't even follow Todorov's narrative structure, which most TV shows and films do. Yes, we do have a recognition of the disruption, and an attempt to repair, and a new equilibrium too. But we never actually see the initial equilibrium and the disruption of it. We are simply thrown into the narrative at the point where the main character is already no longer living his normal life. By doing this, it makes the audience feel more uncomfortable and on their toes throughout the episode. Its unexpected and expanded ending is one that the audience doesn't see coming, and it ends with something bigger than the story we are initially presented with. We do find out what happens in the story, but we still don't really understand what the Twilight Zone actually is. No TV show at the time was quite like this one. It experimented with structure, storytelling, and genre subversion, which surprised the audience at the time. For me, the scene of the episode that intrigued me the most was this one. It's so experimental and no one would have seen that coming. It's almost a jump scare back when jump scares weren't really even a major aspect of the horror genre, which really shows how experimental this, this show was like right off the bat. Other episodes such as The Eye of the Beholder and Nightmare at 20,000 Feet mostly experimented with suspense. 
In the Eye of the Beholder, we are told a story about a woman who is trying to change her appearance with plastic surgery in order to look like everyone else and fit in society. We aren't actually shown what she looks like until right at the end of the episode. In fact, we don't see a single face in the whole episode until right at the end. This is due to the fact that the whole twist is that she looks normal to us, but everyone else looks different. By not showing anyone's face for an entire 20 minutes, it makes the viewer feel extremely uneasy and tense. The subtext of this episode is pretty self-explanatory, conforming to societal norms and fitting in as someone who is different. As for Nightmare at 20,000 feet, the story is about a man who is afraid of flying on a plane, and he keeps seeing this weird looking monster on the plane wing every once in a while, but every time he tries to tell someone it goes away. The problem is that the monster is trying to sabotage the plane, and when he tries to tell someone, no one believes him. Similarly to the previous episode, this one builds suspense throughout, and has a very climactic ending, where he saves everyone in the plane by killing the monster. This could be linked back to the Neil's genre theory, as it follows what the audience would expect of the sci-fi genre. The subtext for this episode is much harder to grasp, and perhaps there isn't really a special meaning behind this one, but it very well could have something to do with the Cold War. In modern day, many films and TV shows have taken influence from the Twilight Zone, and even have similar styles and narratives to it. Films such as The Truman Show, Final Destination, Midnight in Paris, and Us are all based or inspired by the Twilight Zone. Aspects of the episode Mirror Image clearly resemble the antagonists in Us. The idea of being transported through time in a vehicle from Midnight in Paris can be seen in A Stop at Willoughby. The idea of being stalked by death and being able to sense you're going to die from a final destination can be seen in the episode 22. And honestly the entire plot of the Truman Show is actually extremely similar to the episode Special Service from the 80s version of the show. Through this, it can be seen just how much The Twilight Zone has had an influence on modern media. The modern reboot in 2019 was created by Jordan Peele. Overall, it was received well by the fans of the original show, and also the mass audience who have no knowledge of the original show. It was a good way to bring back the idea of The Twilight Zone into the modern world, but at the same time, many people thought there was something missing. Yes, the narrative and structure of the episode was quite similar to the original, Plus, it included new aspects and directions we hadn't seen before. But whether it's the original show's aesthetic and feel that was missing, or the lack of Serling's presence is what made the show feel somewhat dull to some people. Of course, the original show was set in a very different time, where there were different things going on in society, and the audience had different appeals, ideals and morals that wouldn't have resonated with new audiences as much. In terms of Stuart Hall's audience reception theory, it depends whether you're talking about the show's original audience or its modern audience, as of course, the original audience would have had different ideologies, so they wouldn't have had an oppositional reading of, for example, the lack of diversity in the show and the portrayal of women, whereas the modern audience would have more problems with the show. Although Peele's reboot may not have fully succeeded to capture the feel of the original show, he clearly did try. For example, there is an option to watch the entire show in black and white if you wanted to. But I think the best part of the entire reboot is actually the final episode of season 1, as I feel that is the one that really proves the entire point of this video. The episode is called Blurry Man. It is set in real life at a studio where they're filming an actual episode of the show. We see that they are struggling to make the new episode, and the main character is one of the writers of the show. We see that she herself is a huge fan of the Twilight Zone and is inspired by Serling. We later find out that there is a weird figure that keeps appearing in one of the shots of the episode, and that actually this figure has been in every single episode of the show. The main character starts actually seeing this figure in real life, and it starts chasing her around the studio. The world becomes distorted and drained of colour. Eventually she gives up and decides to confront the figure. As it moves closer over to her and comes into the light, we see that it is actually none other than Rod Serling himself. She takes his hand and they walk through the doors into the Twilight Zone together. As a fan of the show, personally, I think that Peel doing this was, quite, was actually quite effective. 
I believe that it was really quite interesting and meaningful. This twist ending shows how Peel wanted to quite literally show that Serling has been here the entire time. Though he may not be there in person, his work and influence is still present, not just in the show, but in all of modern media. An article titled How the Twilight Zone Predicted a Paranoid Present talks about how much of our modern world was predicted 50 years ago in the Twilight Zone, such as robots, technology, aliens, and many aspects of modern society. The final part of the article reads, but there is one twist that encapsulates the series. It's the idea that humans are the true monsters. The ultimate reveal of the series is that even when you're lost in the timeless infinity of the Twilight Zone, that fifth dimension between shadow and substance, you haven't actually gone anywhere. You've been right here on Earth all along. The Twilight Zone has clearly been very influential, and though being extremely experimental at the time, many of the aspects like storytelling and structure have evidently become more mainstream and something audiences are now used to seeing. In conclusion, it is quite apparent that the Twilight Zone has had a huge influence on media and that it has played a big part in shaping society the way it is today.